Hello everyone. How are you today? I hope you're still surviving amidst the pandemic we are facing. So, before we're going to discuss our lesson, let's read first a poem entitled The Floor and the Ceiling. The floor and the ceiling, winter and summer, whatever the weather, the floor and the ceiling were happy together in a quaint little house on the outskirts of town, with the floor looking up and the ceiling looking down. The floor bought the ceiling an ostrich plume hat, and they dine upon drippings of a bacon fat. Dice, artichoke, hearts, and cottage cheese, and hundreds of other such delicacies. On a screen in ports in early spring, they would sit at the player piano and sing. When the floor cried in friends, I have vow, adore, the ceiling replied, You adorable floor. The years went by as the years they will, and its little thing was fine until. One evening, enjoying their bacon fat, the floor and the ceiling had a terrible spot. The ceiling, loftily looking down, said, You are the lowest floor in this town. The floor, looking up with a frightening grin, said, Keep up your chatter and you will cave in. So they went off to bed while the floor settled down. The ceiling packed up her gay wallflower gown, and tiptoeing out past the Kim Pendale chair and the gate leg table down the stair, took a coat from the hook and hat from the rack, and flew out the door, farewell to the floor, and flew out the door, and was seen no more. And flew out the door and never came back. In a quaint little house on the outskirts of town. Now the shutters go bang and the walls tumble down, and the roses in summer run while through the room, but blooming for no one. Then why should they bloom? Oh, what is a floor now that brambles have grown over window and woodwork and chimney of stone? Or what is a floor when a floor stands alone? And what is a ceiling? When the ceiling has flown, by William J. Smith, such a very good uh, poem. So, based on the poem, can a ceiling survive without a floor, or a floor can stand alone without a ceiling? Imagine a house without a ceiling. What will happen? And rain comes and typhoon comes. So it will not survive long. And imagine without a house without an upper floors or floors. When plagues, floods, plagues come, what will happen? Where will you go? So upper floors is very important part of the house. They need other in order to strengthen the house okay so today class we're going to discuss about upper floors what are upper floors what do they compose of okay so upper floors they may be composed of timber and concrete when we say about timber it's made up of wood plus concrete to make an upper floor. What are the functions of an upper floor? Okay, so let's see what is the first function. Support impose loads. So based on the poem, who is supporting the ceiling? It's the floor. Okay, the support impose loads. So the, the floor support everything above it okay ceiling the wall above it water tanks the cr everything on it even the 
first sons on Tabogi. It is supporting everything on it. Okay, so as an apple four, it should not deflect under load. So the four should not be turned aside. Okay, so it should support not deflect under load because uh, everything will fall down when the upper floor is not that supported okay and then next function is strength and stability okay so strength meaning uh, the house is stronger when it has an upper floor because uh, they support everything and even stability your house is more stable when there is an upper floor of course so imagine when uh, a strong wind came typhoon came, so your house is more stronger against those calamities okay then provide rest train for external walls imagine when the walls without an upper floor uh, when earthquake will come what will happen to the floor and to the walls when one of them are missing okay uh, they will not they will collapse okay so um, upper floor provide restraint for external walls so that uh, the walls will not collapse fire resistance for 30 minutes what do you think well for those uh, upper floor can survive fire Yes, because uh, those upper floors are being combined with um, chemicals. For example, uh, those calcium silicates, they're going to put it on the wood so the fire cannot consume them easily. And other put uh, gypsum board around those joists and those gypsum word are very resistant to fire they will not burn easily so after 30 minutes uh, the firefighter have arrived already okay what other functions of an upper floor limit sounds transmission okay Imagine when there is no apple floor on the second floor and you are on the ground floor. What will happen? Okay. Can you concentrate when you are teaching or when you have a lesson? Maybe not. You will be distracted. So those apple floor uh, limit sounds transmission because they lock the sounds that coming from above okay so they limit the sounds of a fit stamping and uh, the noisy uh, learners above you and then if we have function we have also principle okay so the first principle is Large timbers, known as joists, span from wall to wall on which a decking is placed to form a level floor. Okay, so why large timber? Because uh, they will support a very heavy load, the ceiling and everything above the upper floor. So small timbers is not advisable and medium timber. They should be large enough to support uh, above. 
and then the king so it's not only joyce but also um, we should place a decking above the toys so that the floor will be level. And then, joists are normally placed in position when black work has reached the required level. Okay, so joists uh, are put so that um, the required level will be meet and uh, the work is more strength has more strength and it will not collapse easily because they will provide uh, support in everything uh, on above the core so the next one is joists are placed or space at 400 millimeter center to center so the spacing should be 400 millimeter center to center okay so the center of the joist um, to the center of another joist should be 400 millimeter okay and the rule of thumb calculation for depth of joist is okay formula is span of joist In millimeter okay divided by 24 and the result will be added to 50 millimeter so we have here example example uh, four meter span so the formula is should be in millimeter so we need to convert uh, meter into millimeter how many millimeter are there in one meter so 1000 so we have here 4000 because 4 times 1000 equals to 4000 and then divided by 24 so here 4000 divided by 24 then plus okay 50 we have here plus 50 equals to 217 millimeter use a 225 okay so uh, let's proceed to cross section ground and upper floors okay so where is the ground okay this is the ground okay this is the ground okay and where is the upper floor so these are the upper floors okay so that's it so because of the wall okay so the ground and the upper floors meet. Okay. Then construction details. First, uh, secured two wall at ends. So this is we call it as joist. Okay, this is joist. So it should be built in. Okay. This is the joist. Okay. This color brown. This is the joist. Okay. And this is the wall. The blue color one. This is the wall. Okay. It says here built in. So you should insert the joist in to the wall okay so uh, you should dig the hole on this wall and then build in so you insert the joist uh, inside this wall okay 
and then how deep is the bearing okay so it should be 90 millimeter minimum so it should be 90 millimeter it should be inserted 9 millimeter deep okay and then on uh, the end of the grain treated with preservative okay what preservative of food do you know okay so lignum this is an example of preservative so that uh, termites will not eat uh, the wood okay and then mortar okay pack solidly around joists what is mortar it's not the mortar and pestle that you know okay that this is the uh, right term for uh, the combination of cement sand water okay uh, the right term for them is mortar when they are combined together okay so should be packed solidly okay so around this end of the joist uh, it should be placed with mortar okay around around the joist okay okay so that is uh, the bearing okay okay so it should be 90 millimeter minimum bearing so this is the joist built in to wall okay so see that so uh, the joist is inserted into the wall and these are the fresh uh, mortar placed around the joist okay so they are packed solidly around the joist so upon insertion it is uh, also been uh, cemented so that uh, it is more um, stable what else do we need uh, to put um, other objects to make it more okay so this is a mortar it is put around the choice okay okay so that the joist is more secure okay so the joist is built into the wall and then they are put uh, water around it and so that uh, to provide stability galvanized steel joist hanger built into wall okay so this is the galvanized steel joist hanger how does a galvanized steel joist hanger look like okay look like this this is the galvanized steel joist hanger okay so they are nailed around okay? except on top of the joist okay this is an example of this galvanized steel joist hanger built into wall so uh, the joist is now securely placed into the wall so this is the 
plus half this rd the one still joy summer put around the joys okay then they are nailed into the beam get it okay so after placing the galvanized steel joy sanger uh, you must secure it to parallel walls okay see this one so there is a party wall then you must put okay a packing so this is a packing a piece of wood placed beside uh, the joints okay so this is the packing party wall the wall in between okay then after securing it to the parallel walls you put should put grid, bridging solid bridging between the joists okay what is the measurement at least three for the depth of the joists okay so this is the joist get the three for of it then you put uh, the bridging okay so these are the bridging place between the joints okay so we have the internal walls sometimes um, the ends of the joists may be rested on a wall plate so these are the wall plate okay so uh, these are the joists okay these are the joists resting on the wall plate okay on top when turn up although in practice the wall plate is often omitted so sometimes Um, there are wall plate, okay? but in reality, there is none. Okay? This provides a sound uniform bearing with maximum distribution of those. So the bridging as I uh, discussed, uh, supports the joists. And also, the joist is resting on the top plate so it also provides support to the joist in carrying loads okay for joists from either side meet on a log bearing wall they are usually placed side by side and nailed to each other with laps of at least 150 millimeter so they are placed side by side they are not joined here not join um, the both ends but side by side okay so the laps is should be 150 uh, millimeter so that's the laps okay 150 uh, millimeter
okay so let's erase those in okay so here this is the party wall these are the party wall okay see it they are the party walls okay so the joist is resting on it okay and then also there is a lapse okay see that so here from here is 150 meter laps okay and there is a bridging here it's called i uh, will discuss it later to prevent the joist from boosting okay and side by side so the side of the joist is placed on the side of the other joist okay got it so let's discuss about bridging or strutting okay so as the span of the joist increases about three meters there is a tendency for the joist to twist which could cause damage to the ceiling below so when it is uh the span increases about three meters so that is pretty long so you need to put a bridging or strutting so to prevent this twisting strutting is usually included if the span of the floor exceeds 2.5 meters okay so there are two forms of strutting so herringbone strutting and solid strutting what's the difference okay so solid solid bridging it is used to tie joists together so that okay the load is distributed over a number of joists okay so the weight above this joist is uh, distributed to the other joists when there is a bridging place okay so the joist can carry uh, heavier objects when there is a bridging place okay so what is the purpose how to prevent joist from twisting okay so the joist can twist when it is uh, stand alone so there is between a, there is no connection between this joist to the other joist so the tendency is the joist will twist okay lines of bridging should be positioned no greater than 1300 um, millimeter apart okay so the line should be uh, greater than 1350 millimeter apart okay. okay so see the line here okay so that's it it's about a solid bridging so this is the example of the close up of the solid bridging so this is the joist these are the bridging okay these are the bridging okay to connect the joist from the other joist so that then can carry uh, more loads because the loads of carry, carried by this joist can be distributed to the other joist. So that is solid bridging. Okay, the other types of bridging is herring bone. Okay, bridging or strutting. What's the difference between the solid bridging? So this herring bone is 
just like a letter X placed between the joists, okay? So, herring bone strapping is made up of approximately 335 times 35 millimeter timber with their ends cut at an angle and a nail together where they intersect and to the top of one joist and the bottom of the next. So, that's it. The space between the top first and the last joist and the adjoining wall is wedged with folding wedges to take the thrust of the strati. Okay. So that's the second type of reaching. It's called herringbone. So for your activities, uh, these are your activities. First one is we're going to answer it is better solid or herringbone bridging. Defend your answer. So you write it on a piece of paper. Okay. Then after finishing this activity, you make either a poem if you don't like a poem then you can create a dance okay about lore okay so that's the, your second activity if you are done with those two then the last activity is we're going to draw a model of an lore Okay, guys, thanks for viewing and listening. Thank you so much.